one of the most disgusting displays of, of, of human nature I've, I've ever seen in this space was that day. I, okay, so we, we got to start here. So we're going to start with something that's not necessarily a Pulse Chain ecosystem piece of news. But hey, this three-letter organization, the SEC, has been taking them on yeah. the chin one after the other after the other from all these different crypto uh, lawsuits that they're just kind of throwing at the wall. Uh, just as of last week, I think it was probably the day after we went on the air last week, Ewok, um, they lose yet again, um, drop the remaining case they had against XRP actual personnel. Like they had personal lawsuits against Brad Garlinghouse and I don't remember all the names, but Garlinghouse is one of them. So again, they, they, they've been capitulating. You know, they've been not appealing things. They've been losing cases. They lost the Ripple case. Um, they lost one recently to Uniswap as well. I, I, what are your thoughts, RG, like with what's going on with them right now? Because they're now not even pursuing things that they had been previously. Are they capitulating? Like, is are Gary Gensler's days numbered? Are they turning things around? Um, Ewok and I have been talking for a while. I, I think the judges are just really starting to like see hmm. you guys are just throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. And, you know, we. We don't trust everyone's anybody. time. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. you know, on top of all the people that you said are, are bitch slapping them, uh, the judges are bitch slapping them too. And we're seeing it in, in the, in the descent from, from the, or not from descent, but from what the judges are saying um, about their actions uh, and their reactions and, and their comments and the things that they're bringing to the table. Um, the, 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 the judges are even slapping around saying this is unprofessional um, here. Here's, so, so let, let's talk about the good and the bad. So, so the, the bad is, is that this is political uh, and we're in a very political time period right now. Um, the positive for us on the political time period or time scope with the election year is what I'm talking about coming up and looming. Um, when the election year comes, crypto gets ignored. Um, they get, it's a hot potato. And uh, there's people that like it. There's people that don't. Most don't understand it. Some do. So there's a, a, a weird um, kind of mixture of, 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 of understanding within the political space of crypto. Now, when the election year comes, they all go to their, um, their, their right corners and they get ready to go do their thing. They don't touch hot potato issues. They steer clear of all the things that are going to screw up their elections. None of them, neither side or, or either uh, candidate, wants to touch hot items. So they stay away from crypto. That's what we've discovered over the years is that that's what happens. So I think that we're going to get a free pass this next year. Mm -hmm. um, the case against Richard. Um, <laughs> so so you just look at it like this. So So we've got this very weak opponent in the ring and it's getting beat up by all of the opponents out there. Right. So everyone's beating up this, this, this fighter that wants to step into the ring and do something. And that's the sec. They're just getting beat up by everybody. And now they are about to step into the ring with the Mike Tyson of crypto. And it is going to be extremely bad for them. Richard is no dummy. He set this up from the beginning to win. I know he did. You look at how this is, has, has come about. You look at how the complaint was wrote and it's just, it's a setup. Richard has receipts. We can see the receipts mm -hmm. on chain. So the charges against him, the receipts are already there. They just don't even know it yet. <laughs> I think that by the time they do discovery and look at the case, you know, when they have a conversation with Richard about it, I think they're going to realize that they're going to have to back off because they don't have a case. There's nothing there. There's no there there. And I discovered that with, with uh, my interaction with the SEC already. Um, so, you know, over a year ago, uh, they came at the community first. Yeah. They subpoenaed me four different times. Um, two of my entities, uh, three of my entities, I should say, uh, two of them that operate under the auspices and the rules of the SEC. Uh, so my lawyers uh, that, that represent my entities um, did exactly what they were supposed to do uh, because they operate under the auspices and they submitted everything, um, dropped our drawers, bent over, spread them and coughed <laughs> and uh, 
we we got a clean bill of health. Uh, even the Hex Investment Trust, which that is very, very important here mm -hmm. for people to understand. Uh, now, the SEC didn't give us the authorization to operate, okay? Um, we had to set the trust up under the rules of the SEC. Very, very fine rules that it took whales and, and, and kinetics months to draw that up months to make sure that we were within compliance so that we can put hex in a trust and sell it as a security. And they did that. And so far we've been able to operate as such. Um, so that was like litmus test one, just setting it up and, and putting it out there and, 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 and selling the product with hex in it. Um, not hex is the security, but as our derivative being the security the hex investment trust mm. being the security with hex in it. Uh, so that just tells me that, okay, um, they haven't come at that. So they must not think hex is a security. Uh, when they subpoenaed the second time, they came at us to, you know, look at what uh, dealings that the hex investment trust had um, with Richard Hart and the ecosystem and everything. And of course we complied. 100%. Our lawyers complied 100%, opened up all the books for them and, um, and nothing, you know, they, they, they didn't come out us with any violations. Didn't say the hex could not function in there. Um, again, not a stamp of approval. Um, but they didn't tell us to cease and desist. They didn't stop us. They didn't turn right. it off, uh, or come at it any harder. So, and then the other subpoena was for, uh, you know, the discourse syndicate itself, um, the YouTube channel, the talent within it, me as the owner, um, came at that. Um, however, the things that they were asking for, um, the lawyer said, Hey, this is not a judge ordered subpoena. Um, let's have them bring a judge ordered subpoena because we, the information that they're asking was just way too vast. Yeah, they wanted like it everything. And that's just not how, you know, it operates. It functions that way, you know, go to a judge and ask the judge what you want from me and why, and then I'll comply. Um, I'm not operating outside of the law. I'm operating with inside the law. I have never hurt anybody. I don't have any business dealings with Richard Hart. And so they're going, and I don't even have any communications with Richard Hart. You know, he's barely even said, thank you for the things that we've done here. Um, so with that being, being said, um, nothing ever came of that. And then personally, me as a human being, they, they came to me and subpoenaed me personally. Um, I actually spoke with the investigating officer, um, gave her all my information, said, I would love to comply. Please, you know, my lawyer wants you guys to, to bring a court order. Uh, so that I can, you know, give you what the courts are asking for so that we can dial this down into exactly what you want. I'm not going to just open my whole life up and accounts yeah. and communications with every human being that I know just to appease an agency that is not, is, that is a private agency <laughs> that's bringing civil suit against me. Exactly. Um, yeah. It's not a criminal. Everybody needs to understand this also, that the SEC does not bring criminal charges up again. Right. This is DOJ that does that. This is, so civil. This is the SEC, uh, uh, a civil or that, that brings civil case, uh, and, and, uh, you know, to, to, to these, uh, uh, entities. So, um, they, they left me alone after that. They, they never got a court order. They never sent me another subpoena. They never, um, uh, tried to, to dig any deeper into what it was that my dealings were, uh, with this. And I've been an open book. I've spoke about this online. Uh, I still stream. I haven't hid. I haven't gone away. In fact, I've exposed myself more by going on tour and being city after right. city with my information being out there, where I'm going to be and where I'm at. I'm not hiding from them. So I don't think they have a case. I think that it would be very difficult for them to, um, to bring any charges up against any of us because we've all been above board and we're doing the right thing. We are the only crypto and crypto community that is doing the right thing in this space. Hex is a decentralized, better Bitcoin. And I'm going to say this, Hex is better than Bitcoin. So if they like Bitcoin, then they're going to love Hex because it's better. 
And with the decentralized um, L1 that we now have, now we have better crypto than anybody has yeah. ever come up with. DeFi is here. DeFi is finally here. And that's what we got. So they're going to have a really hard time, um, in my opinion, with trying to bring any case up against any of the, the people or the ecosystem itself or Richard Hart himself. So that's, that's my opinion on it. Yeah. You walk, you have any thoughts on that? No, I think he covered it, man. He, uh, yeah, I, I, I have mentioned this a couple times and, you know, we talked about a little bit before we got started that, you know, once all this is out in the air and there's really a big nothing burger until the man even is served and he hasn't been served. So, you know, my thoughts were, is we kind of all need to stop promoting it, talking about it. Um, because I kind of feel like we're creating our own chilling effect. Um, you know, the, People forget about things in what 60, 90 days. They, they so it's sooner than that, probably, my brother. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> generous, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, and especially if there's green candles, they really forget about it even sooner. So, <laughs> you know, that 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 change changes it big time as well. But you know, I just I think this whole thing is gonna be a nothing burger. I think I, until he served, there's nothing to really talk about. People were asking about SEC news and this and that and they're just really worried about it. And I, I, as far as I'm concerned, there's not a whole lot to be worried about right now. No. People who are in those coins where the guys are wearing orange jumpsuits, those are the people that should be concerned yeah. about their crypto, their influencer, right. their founder. Because Richard went up against all four of those guys that are in jail now wearing jumpsuits. He, he spoke out against all of them. Yep. He warned everybody about all of them. And look, you know, I mean, when Hex launched... Tone Vase brought two lawyers and tried to bum rush Richard. Mm. One of the most disgusting displays of, 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 of human nature I've, I've ever seen in this space was that day when Richard was launching Hex, yeah. the founder of a crypto that was doing the right thing, that built something better than Bitcoin. And Tone Vase, the scumbag that he is, brought two lawyers on to try and browbeat Richard into submission. And Richard didn't pull, pull any punches and he didn't give in. And he just says, hey, well, then they're going to have to have me cease and desist if that's what's going to happen. And they didn't. They never did for four years now. So from that day, it just proved to me once again. I mean, it was a scary stream because of, you know, when a lawyer and a guy like me. hears a lawyer talk like it sends a chill up my spine, mm. you know, because <laughs> they're so they're so like, you know, you're going to jail. I'm going to put you under the freaking jail boy, you know, and, and just that talk, man, it just really does something to me. And, and, and because I can't do anything to those guys, I can't, I can't react to them. I can't, you know, they, they're, they bully, you know, and the, the way that I'm used to handling bullies is a lot different than, you know, how the courts <laughs> allow you to handle bullies. Right. And, 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 and you just got to kind of sit there. It's like when somebody sticks a gun in your face, you know, you freeze. You can't do jack shit. You know, you you can't do anything. It's 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 that's what it felt like. And that stream was just horrible for me. And I've never forgotten. And I will never forget those gentlemen's faces. And I will never forgive Tone Vase for that. On the day that Richard Hart launched a crypto, they should have been praising him. They should have been thanking him. They should have been behind him, encouraging him to do better in this space. But no, it was this weirdness. And why? It was all about greed. It was yep. about greed because those guys have Bitcoin bags. And right. they didn't want to see something come out better than Bitcoin. This is the only tech space in the world that allows old tech to roll over and hinder and 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 suppress the advancement of new technologies that can make this space better. I've never seen anything like it. I don't understand it. And it's got to stop and it's got to go away. 